Let's talk about chapter 13, characteristics of composite materials. A composite is a combination of at least two substances that produce something that's stronger than either of the two substances by themselves. At least one of the substances is going to form a solid reinforcement, while the other is going to typically be a liquid that serves as a binder. After it's poured in, it's going to solidify around and in the solid reinforcement to form something strong. The reinforcement is going to be designed for whatever the purpose is. So fiberglass has several different kinds of reinforcement styles. There depends how the fibers are run in relation to each other. One of the early examples of composites are mud bricks used in ancient times to build structures. The idea was you take straw, you pour liquid mud through it, you cook it in an oven, and then you have something that's stronger than either clay or straw by themselves. One of the most popular composites out there is something called FRP, Fiber Reinforced Plastic. This is what you would typically know as fiberglass. So if you've ever seen a ski boat or a bass boat, they're made out of fiberglass, typically a hand layup operation. So fiberglass reinforcement looks like this before it's been uh, inundated with the resin. And I have another piece right here. This is a slightly different style. If you notice the directionality of the fibers, this one is like a cloth. It has all its fibers running at 90 degrees to each other. And this one has its fibers running 45 degrees to each other. The 45 degree angle results in a stronger structure because it's always half of your threads or half of your fibers are always engaged in basically whatever forces are being applied. The resin for fiberglass comes in three main varieties. There's polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy. They all look about the same after they've been applied. And what ends up happening is you get something like this. This is fiberglass cloth applied to plywood, and it's been impregnated with the resin. The resin is cured, so you essentially have a plastic surface reinforced with that fiberglass cloth. This results in something that's very strong, stronger than the plywood itself. In this case, the plywood is forming a core for this material. It gives it somewhere to be. Resins used for fiberglass are thermosets. So once they've been set up, they can't be recycled. They can't be melted down and used again. Polyester resin is the most popular and it's the cheapest resin to use, although it does have some drawbacks. Polyester resin is not a very good glue, so it doesn't stick to things like plywood very well. So it's not as useful for uh, situations where you need a core. Also, over long periods of time, polyester resin will tend to soak up water. So there's a lot of boats that were built in the 70s with polyester resin and fiberglass that are totally rotted out because the water went through the polyester to the plywood and slowly uh, created rot. Epoxy resin is a high performance, it's expensive, but it's a very, very good glue that can be used with things like wood flour to form a very strong glue. It wets out fiberglass very well. It's totally waterproof, but again, it's very expensive, probably about three, four times the cost of polyester. Vinyl ester is somewhere in the middle. It's not quite as expensive as epoxy. It has some slightly better properties than polyester, but in all of these, the real strength in the FRP setup is going to come from the fibers. The more thicker fibers you use, the stronger the end product is going to be. And typically, fiberglass, if it's used by itself with no core, is going to require several layers on top of each other. 